Yo, 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 welcome back to the No Cut Sports Podcast with your host, Nile Frazier. And today we got a few things to talk about, but before we get started, could y'all please like, comment, and subscribe to always catch this vibe, man, you already know. So, a few things that we want to talk about today, um, as y'all know, it's the off season, and um, you know, not too much information is coming out about, uh, around this time. But like I like I said before, I do want to dive into you know there are some current topics we're talking about like the Howard Eskins situation, and uh, and uh, not Howard Eskins but the Nick Sirianni and Jalen Hurts situation that Howard Eskins reported on, um, you know and uh, some and then some older stuff that we're going to talk about as well, uh, diving back into some of the press conferences of some of the uh, what the you know coaches have said um, throughout this uh, off season, and um, yeah so. Let's get into what we want to get into. I think the I think the biggest topic we want to talk about today is continuing on with the Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni situation. Now, as y'all said, now as I said before, I don't really think I don't me personally. And I'm and I'm gonna just I'm gonna just give you my personal, really my real personal personal opinion because I've been going back watching the press conferences with Jalen Hurts, watch the press conference with Nick Sirianni, just to see if I can get a gauge of what's going on, right? So, and other press conferences too as well. But if y'all do remember back in April during the draft, like after the draft, uh, Nick Sirianni um, was asked what his job or role was on his team. And he simply said he's the head coach. Now, people want to speculate that, you know, the Eagles don't, you know, don't want to give uh, so much power to the coach because of that Chip Kelly situation and things like that, which I understand. I don't know that to be true. Like I said, we just that's the stuff you hear, you know, as you be as you do this. Um, information that you hear that flows around and stuff like that. So, but um, that was the thing that they didn't want to give you know a coach uh, the same power that they gave Chip Kelly. So then, you know they come in, they bring in Nick Sirianni, this, that, and the third. You know, n- never has coached, uh, never was a head coach before. A uh, crazy interview uh, uh, when he when he first got hired. You know, but it's been panning out to be you know pretty decent when when you look at it from a win and loss uh, uh, perspective. So, um. But yeah, so 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 when he so so I'm like, all right, you know, there we go with that. So when they had asked Nick, when he had asked Jalen Hurts a few days ago about how how Nick was and how, how did he how did he feel, you know, Nick was uh open to you know the offensive changes and things like that or something. I can't remember the words verbatim, and he pretty much just tried to give the PR answer. You know, I don't, you know, it's a great question, but I don't know if I have the answer to that. You know what I mean? So. And then he went on to and Jalen Hurts even went on to say that he was that, Jim, that Nick Sirianni has been intentional with his messages and things like that. So he kind of did give an answer, but it's like they took that and spent it. Now you got Howard Eskins coming out here talking about whatever. You know, and I'm probably gonna post the clip. I will post the clip right. When I started to check into this further, when he said he said the offense is 95 percent different, new. Correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's 20% different. It's not 95%. It's only about 20%. I found that out from multiple people. It's only about 20%. So So why why do you think he said that? To make an excuse. The offense is Kellen Moore's. It's not Nick Sirianni's. It's Kellen Moore's offense. And and we already know it. Nick Sirianni is a very good coach. I know there's people that don't. Joe, you're probably one of them that don't want to believe that. The players respect him. Uh, maybe Jalen has some questions, but it's not the head coach. If you're worried about the offense, then it's Kellen Moore. And I, he gets along with Kellen Moore. So, you know, what are you trying to do? Uh, it, it's just he better have a good year. And I think he'll have a better year, but I think he needs to have a good year. Or they're going to do – they're going to you know, Carson Wentz him uh, if, uh, if he doesn't have a good year. But my thing is this. We went out here, you go get Jalen Hurts and sign him last year to a five-year deal, right? $250 million, something like that. Excuse me if I'm off with the numbers, okay? You go out here, get Saquon Barkley, you sign him this year. You re-sign A.J. Brown, you extend Smitty, right? Locking up the offense. You know the offense is solidified now at this point. Even the line is mostly, you know, got a couple people signed on the line this offseason. So, with that being said, Maybe the team didn't like what, you know, how Jalen Hurts said it, but to me, I didn't see anything wrong in what he said. Even when him, even when him, they're sitting there trying to say that he doesn't like the offense. When did Jalen Hurts ever say he didn't like the offense? He said it's a new offense that he's trying to learn and master. I can't give you 
a clear I can't give you a clear answer because it's just, because it's new to me still. You understand what I'm saying? And then for him to say for Howard Eskin to say, well, Jalen, it's only a 20 percent change and not a 95 percent change. How who are you to tell somebody <laughs> who are you to tell somebody what they feel <laughs> like? I don't I don't I don't understand this stuff, bro. If if the quarterback that played the game that's back there 100 percent of the time is telling you that it's 95 percent different than him. Even if it's even if it's eight, whatever the case may be, who are you to tell him what he, you know what I'm saying? Like that this just doesn't make sense. So that's what I'm saying. You gotta we have to put things into perspective because you know how the Philadelphia media is. They will spin they will they will spin a narrative until they can't spin it no more. And it really drives me crazy because it's the same situation we just recently went through with AJ. That's why he didn't want to speak to the media during the season because it's like it's like I know if I say something, y'all gonna take it and run with it, and make it whatever y'all want to make it, and people get tired of that, man. Especially somebody like, and I'm not gonna sit there and say Jalen Hurts is tired of it, but me myself, I'm tired of it because we're trying to win the Super Bowl. We went out here and built the the the, the, the Avengers the Avengers Super Bowl team, bro. Like not a Super Bowl. Well, hopefully it's a Super Bowl team. We don't know that to be true yet. But my thing is this: it looks like the best team on paper. Period. Even ESPN gave us a grade of an A plus as the best off season that we that uh, that that, that <laughs> excuse me the best off season that the NFL team has had. So the Eagles get an A plus grade for their off season. The, the the writing is on the wall, but I see, but I'm starting to see like they're trying to do that same BS again. They're trying to trying to create a divide, especially between Nick Sirianni and I know you know people feel you know we all talked about it on here you know the uh, the collapse of last year and um. You know, um, you know, players then came out and talked about coaches not being in the right positions, not putting players in the right places and stuff like that. And they went out this offseason. They corrected all that stuff. Maybe, maybe, maybe offensive play calling is taken up or it should be taken away from uh, uh, Nick Sirianni. That I do agree with bringing Kellen Moore in. I think he's a proven enough OC that he can he can be left alone with Doug. Oh, God, Doug Nasemeyer, Nusemeyer. I'm so sorry. Believe, believe, believe them alone. And like, and like Nick Sirianni say, go around to other places, maybe the defensive room, wide receiver room, linebacker room, whatever you want to do. But make yourself more available for other uh, 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 positions on the team instead of just being with Jalen. Um, they were even saying that maybe that's why they brought Kellen Moore in because, you know, Nick Sirianni can be, you know, he's, he's you know, he, he, he gets emotional, rah rah guy, which is fine too. But they said that Kellen Moore is more of a lean back, you know, laid back type of person, personality. So, um, and I think Doug kind of is the same way too. But um, I think this will really be a benefit for Jalen Hurts if he, if he, you know, he can't get this down. And I think he will. I don't think he'll have a problem with the, uh, with learning the playbook. Like he said, he said you just have to get those reps in so you can get comfortable with, you know, what you're doing out there. And that's with anything. So. Um, I do think he'll be fine with that. I really don't think it's a a problem. I really don't think it's a problem because even even them coming out, they keep saying, "Well, they keep talking about it." Was it was it was it Adam Scheffner or whatever the case is? They keep talking about it. it. Must be a problem. I don't think it's a problem. Like I said before, I think this is just men. Excuse me, men. Um, um, having a disagreement with something because, like, like I said before, off season, not the off season, but um, during the season. Um, they said that uh, uh, Jalen Hurts had went to Nick Sirianni and, um, you know, was asking for some hot routes or whatever the case is, and they didn't implement that into the offense. So, you know, and we've seen that, you know, this past year. But, you know, and that could just be a disagreement, you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, they went out here, like I said, correcting the guy Kellen Moore, going to implement offenses, going to implement getting the ball out of uh, Jalen's uh, hands quicker and things like that. Um, using using the tight end more, which is going to lead me into my next point. Um, the tight ends, uh, Dallas Dallas Goddard, uh, C.J. Osama, and um, Albert O. got invited to the training. Uh, I said training, excuse me. The tight end camp down in Nashville that uh, Jason Kelsey, uh, George Kittle, and Greg Olson uh, host. So that's really good to see because if you do know anything about uh, Kellen Moore's offense, he likes to implement two tight end sets. Um, he, he, he puts a, I don't want to say he puts a heavy emphasis on the tight end, but he really does utilize the tight end in his offense. And, um, I think we got some pretty decent, uh, uh, uh so well, we already know Dallas, what he is, but I really do think Albert O has a very good upside and, um, CJ Osama being a veteran, I think he's also going to play a big part in this, uh, offense as well. 
But um, it, that was just good to see too because you, I like to see that the guys are working this off season. They they also even posted a, uh, I think Saquon just posted them before I got on here, but him and Jalen are are getting work in today too. So it's like everybody's working, and that's why I wanted another reason why I wanted to make this video because do not believe the hype. Don't believe them what the media is trying to tell y'all like oh this that and the third this is going on between this person and that person because that's what they want and that's what they always want. They see how good this team is and they want to destroy it for whatever our reason. I'm not gonna let that happen. Not on my watch. So everybody's working. Everybody's doing what they need to do. Um, even um, um, like as what Nick Sirianni said, he wanted everybody to come back in shape, you know, ready to go. So um, we're starting to see, we see that. So even Milton Williams, I seen Milton Williams the other day. Benching, I think it might have been yesterday on his story. So, everybody's working. So, that's good to see. And speaking of work, talking about Vic Fangio yesterday had a <laughs> – Vic Fangio, I don't be the last man, but I like Vic, man. I'm going to keep it a bean. Like, Vic is no BS, man. He's going to give it to you straight. So, I'm probably going to throw the clip up here of what he said about the defense of last year. It's great. You know, I grew up an Eagles fan many, many years ago. Uh, my pro coaching career started in Philadelphia 40 years ago. So, Hopefully I'll have a little run here and finish it in Philly too. Yeah, they weren't very good last year. And, um, you know, we have brought in some new players. Uh, we have some new coaches too. And uh, like the way the guys worked in the off-season program. And I'm excited to get camp started and get going. And uh, hopefully that will be a better defense. Um, but pretty much what he was saying was that you know, pretty much defense suck. Like, and we gonna keep it a buck. It did, man. And um, something else I also wanted to say was they had an article that I read, or um, I was watching somebody's YouTube video. I can't remember, man. I'd be deep. I'd be diving down in, into a rabbit hole sometimes, trying to find out all this different information. But uh, they had a uh, a uh, like a chart of the different coaches from under Vic Fangio. That went on to coach, uh, uh, or you know, coach the defense at different teams, and how they all placed like within like, if it won last, it was damn near last, like twenty fifth, twenty seventh, and stuff like that. But when Vic runs the offense, I mean, excuse me, the, when Vic runs the defense, it's more or less you know top t within the top ten, you know, nothing too crazy, but way better than what his what his disciples um, uh, uh, can run his defense at. So. Um, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of glad to see that honestly because I read, like we said before like Jonathan Gannon really did probably was the closest one to be able to replicate his defense and even that wasn't even you know in the Super Bowl it was it just you know still getting cooked so my thing is with him coming in bringing in his coaches and stuff like that and then the players buying them because they know how Vic get down I think we're going to see a turnaround with our defense and um I think, like I said before, with 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 the additions of, uh, especially because you need like the linebackers, like safety and linebackers are a big thing. The corners too, as well. But the linebackers in this system, and then that safety play is going to be a big thing. Um, Sidney Brown, uh, hopefully he's working to get back. Man, I hope to have him sometime, uh, uh, like early in the season if he can get back for a training camp. Um, that would be even better. But um. I know his injury might plague him, but I do think he's just another sleeper pick that we ain't been talking about at that safety position. But you know, you got Reed Blankenship, you got CJ back there, um, so it's so it's some good it's some good players back there. But then that linebacker, that linebacker uh, core is still like I won't say it's an issue, but just not proven yet. Um, you hear about Devin White and uh, Zach Bond and uh, you know in practices and stuff like that, and they and it sounds really good and all that good stuff. We're hoping that Nakobe Dean can work his way back into that rotation as well and uh, make an impact, you know, more of an impact than what we've been seeing from him because um, we've seen the flashes, but, like, this has to be the year. Um, even with – and I was – even, like, Bryce Huff. I've been watching a lot of Bryce Huff. I'm, I know I'm probably just going to be talking now, but I've been watching a lot of Bryce Huff clips, bro. He is finna be nasty work, bro. And I know – I got to be careful saying this. Nolan Smith, right? I really think Nolan Smith going to pop this year. I know a lot of people are sitting there saying, like, um, you know, he ain't really – because my thing is this. From the the combines, what made him – what made Nolan Smith, you know, shoot up. He was a – you know, he was a decent sp a prospect coming into the draft. But when he did his uh, combine, it was, like, off the charts, man. Like, he was – he was all over the place. So, that – that with that, you know, with, with the team seeing that, especially even Howie – 
we thought we would be able to bring him in and make him the next uh, uh, Hassan Reddick. But then this situation happened with Hassan Reddick, and uh, now he's no longer with the team. And uh, we, even, I might even talk about that too. But um, but yeah, we were thinking he was going to be the next Hassan Reddick, but. You know, that was kind of short-lived with Hassan leaving and things like that. And then also the incompetence on our defense where we're not even, you know, playing a lot of the players that we drafted this year. So, um, yeah, so with that being said, I do think that uh, Bryce Huff's going to have a big impact. But then also he's going to be able to bring along Nolan Smith, hopefully, man, because Nolan Smith do got the talent, man. I think just between the coaching, you know, slowing, you know, learning the game, letting the game slow down for him, I think he'll have a decent impact this year. I mean, we really are going to need it, man, because – um. I think Edge is going to be like, uh, I think Edge is our like one of our weaker and weaker spots because like even with Bryce Huff, he played part time, but with them part time snaps, he was he was snapping. So um, I just I just really do hope, and I don't know, maybe how we might make another move. I don't know where because I know we do have like twenty mil, twenty five mil in a salary cap, so um, we can still make a move. Um, linebacker and even safety, Simmons is still out there. I seen LB talking about a Stephon Gilmore, um, which I'm not opposed to neither having him come play safety. But um, I think there might be another move in the works for Howie Roseman, and um, probably won't really see it to maybe after training camp. I would think because you know teams got to chop down from 90 to 53. Uh, I think within a day now, and um, you know a lot of good players might get cut. Um, even with our team, man, we don't really even know. We got a lot of corners and stuff like that, so we got some road decisions to make too. Uh, coming, you know, coming soon uh, as well. But um, yeah, man, it's 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 becoming it's becoming it's becoming a crazy like crazy crazy off season, man. With all this information that's coming out, uh, even talking about Hassan Reddick, man. I thought my screen went down, but um, even talking about Hassan Reddick and this information that recently had came out about him lying to, uh, to the Jets and something like that. I guess when he had found out that uh, Bryce Huff was leaving, you know, going to the Eagles, and he thought he might have had leverage to hold out um, because he gave his word that he would be at the camps and mini camps and stuff like that, and he hasn't shown up yet. So I don't know what that really means. Um, I really don't know what that means for us because I don't – well, I'll put it to you like this. I don't know the reason why – we don't know about, We don't know the reason why Hassan left the team, right, or why – how because Howie never really gave an a, a, a explanation – and then when he had asked him, he kind of got like, you know, kind of got up in arms about it. So nobody really knows why uh, Hassan left. Um, I don't know if the Jets are going to keep him. I don't know if he wants to play for the Jets. I don't know what it is, but I do know he wants a contract. Um, I can I can kind of, I would say, I, I could possibly say, you know, maybe, and I'm not going to say Vic said this, but. And the defense that Vic runs, and you know what I mean. He, you need to be able to drop back linebackers need to, or edges. The edges needs to drop back, whatever the case may be, or Hassan, whatever you know, whatever position he's playing. But he might have to drop back, and that's not one of his strong suits. Um, the thing with Hassan is that he's just pretty much a one-dimensional. He's a pass rusher, and that's all he really can do, or that's all he's really decent at. But I really did like Hassan on the team, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it like if you can figure out, you know, maybe they, maybe they cut him, maybe they, you know, who, who knows. And um, maybe it's a way for the Eagles to get him back, but um, I'm not, you know, I'm not banking on it. But it would be nice to see, cause um, if all this was going to happen, and I, like I said, I don't know if he would have held out for the Eagles, but if all this was going to happen, he could have just stayed here on his last year. But maybe there was, like I said, it's probably just stuff that we just don't know about with Hassan. And um, hopefully, you know, he, my man get it together, and you know, he play this year, so cause he's getting up there in age, and I know he want that contract, but you know, time is slim on his side, so. Um, yeah, man. But um, yeah. So with that being said, um, if there's anything else that you have for me or anything else you want me to talk about, uh, let me know. Um, I'm trying to, like I said, I've been trying to grow my channel. I've been trying to pin comments into the uh, to the comments, you know, get y'all to uh, interact with me and things like that. So, um, you know, just trying to find better ways, just trying to step the channel up, man, and um, you know, make it better. So, with that being said, man, it's not from the No Cut Sports Podcast. I really do appreciate y'all rocking with me. And if you could, please like, comment, and subscribe to always catch this vibe, man. You already know. Go Birds. I'm going to holler at y'all, man. Y'all be safe.